Hey, it's Alicia, and I have something really special for you today. And by special, I mean really intense, <laughs> but really effective. Uh, I am going to show you how to release your quad fascia from your IT band fascia, from your hamstring fascia, where all those muscle junctions get stuck together. Uh, so we're actually going to go after all of that in kind of one technique or one way, one body position on a foam roller. Reasons you would want to do this, you're gonna go to optimization, right? You're gonna, no matter what's going on in your body right now, you're gonna take this whole thing to fluid and buoyant and free and light, right? So if that's you, you should absolutely do this. But if you are in pain and you're looking for, you know, some of the cause, obviously this one technique or body part isn't going to be the whole root cause. It's a whole body situation when pain occurs. But reasons you would wanna do this if you're in pain or if you have IT band syndrome, if you have lateral knee pain that could be connected to tight IT bands, if you have low back pain or sciatica or tailbone pain or glute pain or you think your gluteus medius muscles are not firing and then this area of your body is taking over. Um, if you have outside heel pain, um, anything on this lateral line uh, could be really impacted by that. And then hip hikes and hip imbalances. Uh, if that is you, if you think you have some kind of hip hike or hip imbalance and that may be part of the reason you have low back pain, let's say, or SI pain or tailbone pain or the glutes not firing, then uh, what you will definitely want to pay attention to here is whether your right leg or your left leg is more restricted because anytime we release fascia, we really need to be mapping all the time. So this is a word I use mapping with my clients, with my students um, online. When you map your fascia, you're noticing the differences left to right, front to back, um, and then you're trying to change that map. Or, you know, if you're tighter on the left side, you want to do the left side only, or the left side more than the right. And most of us have a tendency to do both sides evenly, where we want to spend exactly four minutes on the right, you know, and hold a stretch. If we do stretching routines, right, we hold it for exactly 30 seconds, and then we do the right side. Um, so I'm saying don't do that. I w want you to find the imbalances left to right and then do the tight side, the fascially restricted side more. How do you know if it's fascially restricted or more fascially restricted? Um, it's gonna hurt more. So the more intense it is to release that fascia, the unhealthier it is. Um, if it's tender, if it's sore, if the fascial adhesions are bigger, if you notice those knots that you find in your fascia are bigger on one side or you have more of them on one side than the other, these are all clues that that side is more fascially restricted and you're gonna wanna release that side more. And then just a quick word about the whole glute not firing thing or hip hikes. These are clues of pelvic instability um, and something I talk a lot about here when I talk about finding the root cause of physical pain because it is, in my opinion, the hidden root cause of most head to toe pain. Um, it just means pel pelvic instability, just means that maybe one of the, your hips is rotated forward or backward or one is hiked up. And due to that, your brain is asking other muscles to compensate to keep your, uh, your pelvis stable so that your spine is not in danger because your spine sits on your pelvis and your spine houses your central nervous system and your brain will protect that at all costs. So it recruits muscles like your gluteus medius or your gluteus maximus to stabilize, but then they're not available for their normal duties. And you really need a gluteus medius available to you to stand, to walk, to hike, to run, to lunge, to squat, um, all kinds of things. So we need those muscles, but oftentimes they become inhibited. So if this is something you resonate with, or if you hear me talking right now, and you're like, oh my God, I think this is my issue. Um, then I invite you to check the description box below this video because I have a really great masterclass on this topic called Understanding Pelvic Instability. And it will really help make sense of all of this for you, including how you maybe got into the situation in the first place. So with that, I'm gonna show you how to release your quad uh, fascia from your IT band fascia, from your hamstring fascia all at once.
All right, so this entire sequence, I like to start out on my quad. So remember, we're going after the quad fascia, where it's stuck to the IT band fascia, where it's stuck to the hamstring fascia, all three of those muscles and then the junctions between them. Um, you can start high on your quad, you can start low to your knee or in the middle, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, you know, I'm high on my quads right now, so I'm just gonna start there. Um, so I might start just by exploring my quads here. So I'm gonna rotate my femur. Got some nice clunks there. And so right now I'm only on my quad. Um, and I'm resting my right thigh on the foam roller. What we're gonna do to get all of it, it does require some ab strength, is to actually come off the, the roller with the right leg, do a toe tap down, and then right now I'm directly on my quad, but then I'm gonna rotate my leg and my body into that IT band, and then all the way into that hamstring fascia as well. And then once I'm here, I can play around with, I could stay straight and rotate very slowly. And we've got a clunk and then another one and then another one. <laughs> so this definitely requires some agility and patience. And you can certainly take a break and rest your upper body if you need to in between, but that's it. Um, the other options though for each spot would be bending and straightening, bending and rotating. So you could stay bent and rotate, that's always an option. And I encourage you to always explore each one and then straight and rotating or some combination thereof. So you got circles potentially, but you wanna move slow enough. And then that hamstring stuff is the hardest to get into, where you're almost rotating your whole body backwards and still trying to balance. And then here's the thing, if you can relax the leg that's actually on the roller, that's where you're gonna get the best result. And oh my God, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sucks a lot for me. Okay, and then you wanna make sure to explore down by your knee as well. That right there, oh, that's a good clunk. So notice how slow I'm moving and how I'm inching through this range of motion and then getting it to clunk and then clunk again maybe, boom. Boom. <laughs> Violent. That was one, two, and then there's another one down here that's a little more subtle. Okay, so that is how you release your quad fascia from your IT band fascia, from your hamstring fascia. Have fun with this. Good luck. <laughs> um, I know it's going to be really intense for most of you if you're anything like me. Um, because this is just an area of really dense fascia anyway, and where there's more dense fascia, there are more of those nerve receptors that kind of ping us that, oh, this is like kind of intense. Um, but I'd love to hear how this goes for you in the comments, what happens for you. If it is intense, share that in the comments below. So everyone else out there who does it and feels the intensity knows they're not alone. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts, takeaways, anything that happens in your body. If you share that below, I will get in the comments and come talk to you. And if you would do me a really big favor of giving me a thumbs up here on the channel, if you liked this video and you're not subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I have kind of figured out recently that I'm getting shadow banned here on YouTube a little bit and um, people have even told me they're not seeing me in their uh, YouTube homepage anymore and they have to actually go find me. But if you hit the notification bell, then YouTube is forced to actually notify you of my videos. Um, so your thumbs ups really help when you get you know notifications that helps. And then every time you leave a comment for me, it really helps out so much. So if you find value in my videos, I'd be so grateful for your, for those thumbs ups and comments. And I try to respond to every thoughtful comment 
uh, that comes through. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it serves you and your body and I will see you next time. <laughs>